Many caught criminals never admit to their misdeeds. The subject of this histographics issue confessed to all the crimes. However, he was never caught. Besides that, his identity still remains unknown. We are talking about the Zodiac, the most mysterious serial killer in history. His first high-profile murder occurred on December 20th, 1968. However, as it turned out, this crime was not at all the beginning of the maniac's career, but more on that later. On that day, a couple in love, David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, were planning to attend a Christmas concert, but the plans had changed. Past Lake Herman, they drove to a parking lot that also served as a rendezvous area for local youngsters. Shortly, the criminal parked his car behind Faraday's Rambler. Zodiac got out of his vehicle and ordered the couple to leave the car. Straight after that, he momentarily put a bullet in David's head. Betty tried to run away, but she couldn't manage to go farther than eight and a half meters. The girl was stopped by five back shots. Six months later, on July 4th, 1969, Zodiac committed a similar crime a few miles away from that place. The victims of the second attack were Darlene Farron and Michael Mago. Zodiac fired five shots at the couple. Some of the bullets went through Michael and hit Darlene. After that, the killer was about to leave, but hearing signs of life from Michael Mago, he returned and fired two more shots. In the end, Darlene died of her injuries, and Michael survived. Zodiac personally reported the crime. He went to a phone booth a few blocks from the police station in the city of Vallejo. From there, he called the police and told them about the murder and his involvement in the shooting of the previous couple. In the same year, 1969, the Zodiac began to send his famous letters. On July 31st, he sent letters to three publications, Vallejo Times-Herald, San Francisco Chronicle, and San Francisco Examiner. In these messages, Zodiac again confessed to the two assaults. In addition to the confession, all three letters contained fragments of an encrypted pictogram. Each newspaper received only a third of the total pictogram, consisting of 408 characters. The maniac demanded that the publishers include these letters on the cover page on August 1st. If these conditions were not met, Zodiac threatened to kill 12 more people over the upcoming weekend. But the publications did not fulfill the conditions completely. San Francisco Chronicle printed the maniac's letter only on the fourth page, adding to it the doubts of the police chief about the authenticity of the confession. He believed that the author should have provided more evidence of his involvement in the murder. Two other newspapers published the Zodiac letters a day later. The maniac did not carry out the threat, but the letters were sent again. The killer first identified himself with his popular nickname on the 7th of August. His letter began with the line, Dear Editor, this is the Zodiac speaking. In the new message, the maniac indicated the details of the crimes, which were kept secret and not disclosed by the investigation. With this, Zodiac confirmed his involvement in the murders. In addition, he added that if the police manage to decipher the pictogram, it will help them catch the criminal. The very next day, the pictogram was solved by a schoolteacher, Donald Garden, and his wife, Betty. However, the pictogram did not reveal any information that could help the police. The maniac was saying that he was gathering slaves for a future afterlife. After that, the Zodiac again moved from letters to actions. His new victims were Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. Thanks to this attack, for the first time, it was possible to capture the image of the Zodiac, which later became firmly established in the culture. At the time of the attack on September 27, 1969, the couple was on an island connected to the mainland by a thin strip of land. At about 1820, the killer approached the couple. His head was completely covered by a kind of hangman's hood. Only the slits for the eyes were covered by sunglasses. On the chest of the Zodiac hung an apron with a symbol that was often found in his letters, an encircled white cross. After the maniac inflicted several stab wounds on his victims, he drew a similar symbol on their car. At that time, it was already clear to the police that they were dealing with a serial killer who was hunting for couples in love. However, soon Zodiac changed his style and shot a taxi driver, Paul Stein, to whom he got into the car with. Three teenagers from the house across the street saw the killer covering his tracks, but because of the black mask, they mistakenly thought he was African American. Therefore, the arrived police officers did not pay attention to a suspicious white stranger near the scene of the incident. The law enforcement officers only asked if he had noticed the probable criminal. It's possible that the stranger was indeed the Zodiac. It was assumed that he called the police and mocked the mistakes of the police in this situation. The murder of the taxi driver occurred October 11th, 1969, but three days later, October 14th, the maniac again sent a letter to the editorial office of the Chronicle newspaper. 
Together with the letter was delivered evidence indicating the Zodiac's involvement in the assault on the taxi driver, a blood-stained fragment of the victim's shirt. Besides that, in the letter, the Zodiac threatened to attack a school bus, shoot through the wheels, and execute as many children as possible. The next day, someone posing as Zodiac called the police station and made another demand. He announced his desire to see a popular lawyer on Jim Dunbar's famous morning talk show so that he could talk to him live on the phone. Lawyer Melvin Belli agreed to come to the studio, and the host asked the viewers to release the phone lines so that Zodiac could get through. As a result, an unknown person called several times. At first, he introduced himself as the Zodiac, after which he said that his real name was Sam. It was later revealed that Sam and the anonymous caller to the station were two different people. The real Zodiac called the police, and Sam turned out to be a patient in a psychiatric hospital. On October 8, 1969, the maniac sent a postcard to the Chronicle one more time. The 340-character cryptogram contained inside has remained unsolved until now. The next day, a large letter consisting of seven pages was delivered to the same publisher. The Zodiac described the police's mistake in it, that the officers exchanged a few words with the Zodiac and let him go three minutes after the attack on the taxi driver. On November 12th, when part of the letter was published, a police officer who had been in contact with the killer described the evening in detail, but it did not yield any results. On the anniversary of his first official crime on December 20th, 1969, Zodiac wrote to Belly, the lawyer, who had come to the morning talk show at his request. In this letter, he asked the lawyer for help and also sent him another bloody fragment of the taxi driver's shirt. A few months later, Zodiac committed his next crime. On March 22, 1970, a pregnant 23-year-old Kathleen Jones and her 10-month-old daughter went to a nearby town by car. Behind her was another car, the driver of which was constantly honking and blinking his headlights. Jones braked and pulled over to the side of the road. The driver of the second car approached her and reported the instability of the rear wheel. The stranger volunteered to fix the wheel tighter but after the work was completed, the wheel fell off completely. Then the man offered to give Kathleen and her daughter a ride to the gas station in the city where she could call a mechanic. Jones got into the car without any suspicion and the man was driving her around the neighborhood for three hours until he began threatening to kill her. Hearing this, the woman jumped with the child out of the car at full speed and disappeared into the field. At the police station, Jones saw a portrait of the alleged taxi driver's murderer and recognized him as her captor. It was the Zodiac. The killer then managed to return to Kathleen's car and burn it to the ground. Zodiac was sending letters to print publishers and law enforcement agencies almost all of the year of 1970. On April 20, 1970, the killer decided to reveal his name. Next to the phrase, my name, was a cryptogram consisting of 13 characters, but it could not be solved either. The most sensational letters were those sent to Paul Avery, the journalist who wrote articles about the Zodiac. On October 27th, Avery received a Halloween card with the letter Z and the killer's trademark and encircled white cross. The text of the message was, Peekaboo, you are doomed. The maniac did not put the threat into action, but soon after the postcard came a letter with the most famous confession of the killer. The maniac reported another victim. This victim was Sherry Jo Bates, who was killed October 30th, 1966. This was two years earlier than the murder that was officially considered to be the first committed by Zodiac. In his letter, the maniac mentioned the details known only to the investigation. The Zodiac openly and in great detail described his own actions and feelings from them. He beat Bates severely. The girl died from numerous stab wounds. About a month after this announcement, a letter was delivered to the Riverside Press Enterprise. The title was The Confession. In it, the maniac once again confessed to the crime and told unknown details. The anonymous said that Betty was not the first and will not be the last. This letter did not receive widespread publicity until Avery's publication, but signals continued to come from the Zodiac in Riverside where Bates was killed. In December 1966, a poem was seen scrawled on a table in the Riverside Library. It was called Sick of Living, Unwilling to Die. The examination showed that it may belong to the Zodiac, and in fact, the library was the last place where Sherry Bates was seen alive. Six months after her death on April 30th, 1967, an anonymous author sent identical messages to the victim's father, a local newspaper, and the police department. They said that Bates had to die and will die again. 
although this time the text lacked an element resembling the letter Z. Despite all the coincidences, Paul Avery doubted the Zodiac's involvement in the crime. The Riverside police were of the same opinion. They believed that the maniac wrote separate messages in order to appropriate the murder, which he did not commit. The murderer probably assigned himself someone else's crime again on March 22, 1971. He also sent a postcard confessing to the kidnapping of 25-year-old Donna Lass, who disappeared September 6, 1970. However, neither her body nor evidence confirming the Zodiac's culpability was found. Then the serial killer quieted down for three years, after which in 1974, he sent several letters again. However, experts consider these documents the most dubious. No convincing arguments in favor of the Zodiac's authorship have been found. It was also impossible to get on the sender's trail. The author of the letters always switched the typewriter to uppercase, making it difficult to identify its brand. In addition, during printing, the Zodiac was putting 13 sheets of paper and 12 sheets of carbon paper. This helped smear some individual characteristics of the typewriter. Zodiac never glued postage stamps on the envelopes. Due to the signature indicating the relation towards the murder, the letters were delivered without stamps. This is why it was impossible to determine where the letters were coming from. So what do you think? Was everything true in the letters that the Zodiac wrote? Write in the comments, like, and subscribe to the channel to keep up with the most intriguing mysteries of history.